So today we'll be dealing with chapter 20, you know, in the R for data science book. And um, we'll be dealing with vectors today. And um, we've covered 19 chapters so far. And um, here we are looking at vectors, why they are important and what they do and why you know, it becomes necessary for us to consider you know, vectors and um, their role and um, how important they are. Now, the focus of this chapter is on Bayesian data structure, and it's essential you know, to load you know, relevant packages um, and then would we'll use um, the tidyverse as we've been doing. Um, however, here I would just like to mention that you no know, vectors are, you no, know, they are very basic, you no know, data structure in our programming language and them. Um, there are a sequence of elements um, which share uh, more or less the same data type. And um, here we have um, two types of vectors. We have those referred to as the atomic vectors, and then we have um, the lists. As we have here on the screen, the atomic vectors, you know, they have six types, the logical, the integer, the double, the character, the complex, and the row. Um, the integer and the, top, and the double are collectively referred to as numeric, and then the second type of vector is the list. And they are sometimes referred to as recursive you know, vectors because you know, lists can also contain you know, other lists. Now, the chief difference between the atomic and the list is that one is homogeneous, which is the atomic, while the latter, the list is um, heterogeneous. All these would um, see as we delve into, into the chapter. This is just... Um, a pictorial you no know, figure showing the differences and what we, sh we would expect or what is expected you know, as we delve into this you no know, this chapter and as we look at um, atomic vectors and also list now every vector we should know every vector has two properties and um, that's the first one is the type and the second one is the length now the type to determine the type of a vector use uh, this function type of and then it's going to give you here we have um, type of you no know, letters here, character, then type of one to 10 integer. So this type of will tell us the type of the vector, which is a key property. And then the length, which determines the length of the vector. Here we have a list. And then we have this A, B, and then we have one to 10. So the length here is one, two, and what, and three. So it's also, this is also telling us that the list can also carry both um, the numeric and then the, the, the string. So um, lists, you know, they are very, they are very important. Vectors can also contain arbitrary metadata in the form of attributes. These you know, attributes are used to create augmented vectors, which could help build um, additional behavior. However, you know, we should note these three important types of augmented vector. Factors are built on top of integer vectors. Dates and date times are built you know, on top of numeric vectors. We'll see examples and illustrations of this you know, towards the end of, of the chapter. And then data frames and tables are built on top of list. Now, this chapter is going to introduce us to important things about vectors you know, from the simplest to the complicated. Um, and when we get to the complicated ones, um, you might help me out when if I can't you know, explain some things. Okay, we would start with atomic vectors and then we build on that you know, gradually. Um, like I said earlier on, the atomic vectors, we have um, the logical, the integer, the raw, um, the complex, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So the logical, um, as the name implies, you know, they are the simplest you know, type of atomic vector. And then they take three possible um, values, the true, false, and the NA. You know, they are constructed with comparison operators. And then we can also create them by hand with um, you know, concatenate and then the bracket. So here we have um, one to 10 uh, divided by three is exactly zero. So um, here is going to do one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, ten, and divide by three. And whichever one that is giving zero is going to give true. Another is going to list as, um, as four. So this here is the output of this expression. And then here, is um, we can this is when we are creating you no know, logical expression by hand, you no know, by concatenating and writing this in bracket, and then this comes out as the output. Now for the numeric, 
we have the integer and the double vectors, and those are collectively known as numeric. And um, in R, numbers are doubles by default. We'd see examples of that. Now, to make an integer, we have to place this hell after the number. I hope it is called hell anyway. This hell after the number. So here we have type of one. So here it's telling us it's double. And then type of one hell is telling us it's integer. So um, it's seeing you know, the figure one here as, um, as double. And then if you want it to see it as an integer, then it's, um, we are going to put L, you know, uh, at the back, although there are other ways whereby we can coerce this, and then we'll see that later on. Now, the distinction between integers and doubles is not you know, usually important, but there are two important differences that we should note. Doubles are approximations. Um, they, are, they carry floating numbers, and um, that means, you no, know, they might not be precise. You might not be able to fix, you know, um, an amount of memory. It also means that um, they consider all doubles to be approximations. You no, know? let's see this example here: the square roots, you no, know, the square of the square root of two, and then here we have it as two. But we know that this expression, the output is not going to be two. But from the previous, you no, know, example here, we know double, you no, know, the approximation. So if you now do the same x, you no, know, subtract two from this x, then we have you no. Know, this expression telling us that this is actually not two, it's two point something, something, something. So, so this behavior is common when we work with floating numbers. Most calculations include some approximation error. So instead of comparing floating point numbers, we use this. Well, we should use this, which allows for some numerical tolerance. We'll would see examples you know, uh, subsequently. Integers also have one special value, which is Na, while doubles have four. Na that is um, not applicable. Um, then I think not a number infinity and then minus infinity. No, all this, all three special values, not a number infinity and minus infinity, can arise during division, which is very true. So we have this. So we have um, we are writing this by hand now. We are creating um, yeah, we are creating this now, and then we are dividing by zero. So we want to see the output. So this minus one divided by zero is a minus infinity. Zero divided by zero is not a number, and then one over zero is infinity. So avoid using this to check for these other special values. Instead, we can use this is infinite, is finite, sorry. This is not finite or is infinite, then is dot not a number. So these are you no know, where instances where you can have this is finite, yeah, zero, is infinite, that's infinity then is not a number, is not applicable here. Then N, A, N, two, not a number, so we can have it here, then it's not a number, you know, it's strictly on that day. So um, so when we have this, maybe as errors, or when we have this you know, occurring within our data structure, then we know what it means, or then we know what to do you know, with that. Now, character, character vectors are the most complex type of atomic vectors because each element of a character is a string. And a string can also contain an arbitrary amount of data. We've already learned a lot about strings. So here we we'll look at memory. Uh, and then, um, yeah, like it's being pointed out here. This means that each unique string is only stored in memory once. And every use of the string points to that representation. Now this reduces the amount of memory needed by duplicated strings. So we can see the behavior here in practice you know, using this um, function object underscore size. So here we have um, X representing, this is um, a reasonably long string. Now we are calling this now, and then we are going to have the size of this, you no, know, the size of this on the memory. So we have one, 152 bytes. And then here we have um, repeat X, and then we have 1000. Then we are calling the size of this, and um, you can see it's um, 8.14 kilobytes. So here it's telling us that why is not taking up, you know, why does it take up 100, 1,000 times as much memory as X? Because each element of Y is just a pointer to that same string. You no, know, a pointer is eight bytes, so 1,000 pointers to a 152 byte string is eight. You no, know, multiplied by 1,000 plus 152, which gives us um. 14 kilobytes. So this is just dealing with memory, and um, this could become handy, you know, 
sometimes you know as we go on in r now missing values know that each type of atomic vector has its own missing value um, not applicable it's logical yes now uh, not applicable underscore integer underscore is for integer um, here real is for double and then here is for character but it all comes out as any 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 but they have um unique um yeah outcomes normally we are not expected to know these differences because you always use na and it will be converted to the correct type using the implicit question rules that we'll be talking about shortly however there are some functions that are strict about their inputs so it's useful to have a knowledge sitting in your back pocket so that we can be specific when needed now we have um, exercises and um, I've, I've already opened them um, R for data science solution. So I'll just take us through the exercise and then we'll come back here um, if that's um, all right. But we can look at the first one. What's the difference between is finite and then this is infinite? So um, yeah, who can try? I, sorry, I'm, I'm a teacher. So I would want to get a response from the class. Um, okay, ladies first, let me go to Maria Elena. Are you there, Maria? Uh, yes, yes, sorry. All right. Um, okay, so we have to describe the difference between this vector and uh, this one. Yes. Um, all right, so I think the exclamation mark means that uh it's it's not actually exactly is in, in right right okay mm -hmm. so the x should not be infinite oh, okay least. all right okay so having said that let's just um, go to the solutions and run through the exercises um okay is is it open by your screen now the solutions um, uh yes i think right Okay, are we seeing the solutions now? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, as already pointed out, um, describe the difference between this. You no, know, to to find out, we can try the functions on the numeric vector that includes at least one number and four special number values. So here we have um, x zero n a n a n i n f minus i n f. So is x finite? We have true, yes. Here we have false, 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 false. So is x not infinite? Yes, we have true, then it's going to be. So we have true here. We have true here. We have true here. Then we have false here. Then we have false here. And then we have the explanations here. So the this here function considers non-missing numeric values to be finite. Uh, missing na, not a number. And positive and negative to be to not be finite. So here, behave slightly differently. It considers infinite and minus infinite to be infinite, and everything else, including non-missing numbers, to be finite. So we can always go through this to you know to see these differences. Here, the second exercise is uh, we we have to read this code and then explain how it works. So. Um, this is the source. So instead of checking for exact equality, it checks that two numbers are within a certain tolerance. By default, the tolerance is set to the square root of this, which is the smallest floating number that the computer can represent. So uh, this we can also still um, go over and see how how it works um, in the whether in the R studio or can also uh, read more on that. Now, a logical vector can take three possible values. How many possible values can an integer vector take? How many possible values can a double take? No, use Google to do some research. Now, for integer vectors, R uses a 32-bit representation. This means it can go you know, to raised by 32 different values with integers. One of these values is set aside for you no know, NA integer, you no know, for the uh, from the help for integer. So um, some of this we can also check um, online, but we have solutions here that can also help us to understand what um, 
the exercise is um, talking about, it's, um, it's a bit long, and then we have some other um, references that can guide us on what it's uh, being asked. Now, brainstorm at least four functions that allow you to convert a double to an integer. How do they differ? Be precise, okay? So, yeah, so we have this now. The difference between to convert a double to an integer is how they deal with the fractional parts of the double. So there are a variety of rules that can be used to do this. Now, run down towards you no know, minus infinity, run up towards you no know, the plus infinity, and then run towards zero, then run away from zero. So we have you no, know, then we have a, a function here that can guide us on 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 that. And then yeah, we have examples. Okay, I think we have four. Okay, and then we have the five, the fifth one rather. Um, what functions from the read R package allow you to turn a string into a um, logical integer and double vector? You know, the function pass logical, pass logical values, which can appear as variations of true false or you no, know, or one thing. So we can check you know some of these exercises while perhaps we go over you know, the, the, the chapter again. Okay, so um, I would want to continue now using atomic vectors. How do we use atomic vectors? Now that we understand different types of at atomic vectors, now it becomes very useful for us to review some important tools for working with them. These include how to convert from one type to another, and then what will happen, and then how to tell if an object is a specific type of vector, and also what happens when you work with vectors of different lengths then how to name elements of a vector and how to pull out elements of interest. So the first one here, we have coercion. There are two types to convert or coerce one type of vector to another. Now, if you want to do it explicitly, we can use functions such as, um, as logical, as integer, as double, as character, which you know, forces whatever is inside that bracket to become what the function is asking it to do. So whenever you find yourself using exit question, you should always check whether you can make the fix upstream so that the vector never had the wrong type in the first place, okay? So for example, you may need to switch, you know, your read R, you no know, call types, you no know, specification, and, and things like that. However, we have implicit question, which happens when you use a vector in a specific context that expects a certain type of vector. For example, when you use a logical vector with a numeric summary function, or when you use a double vector where an integer vector is expected. Now we would see examples um, shortly. Now, because explicit question is used relatively rarely and is largely easy to understand, here the focus is going to be on the implicit question. Um, we've already seen the most important type of implicit question that is um, using a logical vector in a numeric text that's above. In this case, true is converted to one and false is converted to zero. That means um, the logical, that means the logical sum of a vector is the sum of truths and the mean of a logical vector is the proportion of truths. Now we'll see this um, as we make um, progress here. Okay, so here we have um, X and then we have this function sample 20 and then 100 replaces equals to true. So this, what this is going to do, um, is going to pick 20 random numbers, I think, from one to 100. I think so. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm right. I, I think so, but we can confirm. So then we have um, y is um, x is greater than 10. Then here we have some of y. So how many are greater than 10? So um, here we have 38. How many Y's? Um, okay, mean of Y, what proportion are greater than 10? So we have this, but we can quickly check this in, um, in our studio. Let me check if um, it's going to open. Uh -oh. Just a minute. Okay, so um, is my R studio up? Uh, not for me. I can't see it. No, I oh, cannot oh. see it either. I don't know. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to another.
page entirely. So let me try and, um, okay, reshare. So it should come up any minutes from now. Yeah, it's good now. Okay, so. Um, yes, same for me. Okay, so just give me some, a couple of minutes. My system tends to be a bit slow. Okay. 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 Just some minutes, please. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, I think it's responding now. Oh, oh. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is um yeah. So we are here. So we can check what um, the function does. If we run this now. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so it's going to pick, yeah. So it's going to pick 100 numbers, sorry. It's going to pick 100 numbers, but they can't be greater than, the maximum is going to be 20. So that's what sample does. So it's going to pick um, 100 numbers, but they can't be greater than 20. And then this replace is saying, yes, it can replace you know, the number, but you know, it's going to be random, but it can replace, you know, in, that means a number can occur you know, as many times as possible. So here, we now have um, y, x is greater than 10. And then um, we have um, sum of y. That's the um, total number of x here that is greater than 10, the sum. And then the mean of y, the, the pro, that's um, the number greater than 10. And then we find their mean. So that's what you know, was done you know, in that section. OK, so. Yeah, so this this is um, clear here. So we you may need you may see some code typically older that relies on implicit coercion in the opposite direction from logical um, from integer to logical. So this is if length x then do something. So um, yeah, this is a function saying if this then okay if this do something. So uh, this is saying if this condition holds true, then we can put in something to say, okay, then perform this operation. So in this case, zero is converted to false and everything else is converted to true. I think this makes it harder to understand your code and I don't recommend it. Instead, instead be explicit. Length x is greater than what is greater than zero. So it's also important for us to understand what happens when we try to create a vector containing multiple types, you no, know, using this um, concatenate, the most complex type always wins. Now here we have type of, remember the properties of vectors, type of C, you no, know, here is true. One here is, um, is forcing it to be an integer. So, or this is making it to be an integer, by the way. So here we have, it's an integer. Here, yes, it's here, but it's 1.5, so it's a double. Then here it's it's a character, so we can see um, this type of question too. So an atomic vector cannot have a diff a mix of different types because the type is a property of a complete vector, not the individual element. So if you need to mix multiple types in the same vector, we should uh, we should lose, use a list because the list can also carry a list, and then that would um, see shortly. So test functions sometimes. We want to do different things based on the type of vector we are working with. So 
one option is to use type of, another is to use um, a test function, which returns um, a true or false. You now, base R provides many functions like its vector, its atomic, but it often returns surprising results. Instead, it's safer to use this function provided by Perl, which are summarized in the table below. So it's um, so this you know is this can um, we have this available for us that we can use. So um, we can relate that with um, this here, and then we can make use of what is available here. So we have um, scalar and recycling recycling rules and um yeah okay uh, okay okay let me see okay let's just go to this um expression here so we have sample again 10 plus 100 and then we have this output and then we have run if run if 10 is greater than you know 0 0.5 so um i can take us to r to uh to see what is happening here but um we already have an idea now so um this okay i don't know let me see stop sharing okay r studio okay all right can we see my screen now Yes, yes I can. Studio. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. So this is um, this is um, the R Studio. So this is sample ten. So let's see what that um that's going to do. Okay. Okay. So sample ten is going to give us seven five six three nine eight one ten two four we already know what the sample function does so each of these add it to 100 then you have 107 104 106 109 101 this 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 now run if no does um uh forgotten okay run if is a function i have to check yeah so, so this is a function okay so this is a function pro that provides information about the uniform distribution on the interval from minimum to maximum. And then the run if the first letter is um, N, then we have the minimum and then the maximum. But uh, I want to see. So if you do run if 10, it's going to give you like some decimals, a range of decimals. 0 0.3, 0 0.0, this, 0 0.0, this, 0 0.0, this, no. Randomly, 0 0.0, this, 0 0.0, this. So it's now going to check each of those ones greater than um, um, 0 0.5, and then it's going to return a logical um, expression. So that's what you know, that expression is going to, is performing. And then that's why we have this, you know, uh, as the output. In R, basic mathematical operations work with vectors. And that means we should never need to perform explicit iteration when performing simple mathematical operations. So it's intuitive. Something like this now, one to 10 plus one to two, that means it's going to bring one, add it to one, you have two. Then it's going to bring um, two, add it to two, you have four. Then it's going to bring three, add it to one, you have. So it's going to do it like logically like that. Um, but if we have different lengths, like um, here now, we have one to 10 and then plus one to three, then it's not going to perform you know, the way uh, we want. It's going to give us a warning because um, it's going to be one is longer than, than the other. So while vector recycling can be used to create very succinct, clever code, it can also silently conceal problems. For this reason, Vectorized functions in tidyverse will throw errors when you recycle anything other than a scalar. Now, if we want to recycle, let's see this. Now, table x, one to four, y, we know what this is. And then, yeah, we have this table one to four, y rep, um, one to two, two. So we have one, two, three, four. And then this is going to repeat, you no, know, 
this twice. So one, two, one, two. And then this other way now, rep this each. So it's going to be one, one, you know, two, two. So these are just you no know, ways through which we can you know, bring in you know, some um, dimensions into um, what we are doing now. Naming vectors, all types of vectors can be named, yes. And then we can name them during creation. Here we have x is one, y is two, and then z is four. Then we have the output here. Or after you know, we set names, one, two, three, A, B, C. So one, two, three, set name is a function. That means we have one, two, three, set it as um, A, B, C, and then we have the output here. So um, subsetting, this is actually now interesting. So far we've used um, filter to, to filter rows in table and in table, only, and this only works with table. So we need new tool for vectors. And um, we use this um, square bracket is the subsetting function. And it's called like um, X you no know, subset A or X you no know, A. There are four types of things that you can subset a vector with. A numeric vector containing only integers. The integers must either be all positive or negative or zero. Subsetting with positive integers keeps the elements at those positions. Now we have X and then we have one, two, three, four, five. And then we have X to subset three, two, five. And then we have it here, three, two, five. Now note that these are positions, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So three is three, two is two, five is five. So these are positions. We should note that these are positions. Um, and yeah, so uh, initially I, I got a bit confused because um, I know positions in another programming language starts from zero. So I, I was a bit confused there, but so the third position is three here. I was here. about to point out that too, that in Python uh, we start from zero. Yeah, so yeah, say, yeah. So I, I, I was, I was, I had to stay here and I kept thinking because I, I was like, okay, Python is zero, it starts from zero, but here it's, uh, it starts from one. So position one, position two, position three, we have three. Position one, position two, we have two. Position one, position two, position three, then we have five. And this subsetting becomes very important when you know, we need to, when we are working with you no know, large data sets, and then we can extract you know, the, the particular you know, place we, we are working with. Now, by repeating a position, you can actually take a longer output than, um, than input. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, well, well, okay. I wouldn't, um, let me not um, say too much. But I think, okay, am I allowed to say that? Okay, off the record. Uh, this well, is off the I mean, record. I've, I've kind of figured out. So let, let, me, let me be clear. Okay. It seems like, it seems like I, I can't avoid it. I've tried my best for like two years now to avoid using Python. But it seems like, seems like it's industry gold standard. And, and for all these years, yeah. I have to learn it. And I'm just dancing and I, around. It, yeah, and I think it's also simpler. I'm, I'm, I, I stand to be Sorry. corrected. I huh. think it's simpler. Yeah, I, I'm not. I find, that, I find it a lot more user friendly. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's um, it's simpler, and then the codes are shorter. Anyway, here we are. Okay, so here we have um, these positions, and then we have um, those as our outputs. Okay, so um, we have these positions minus one, minus three, minus five. Now minus one is two which negative okay negative values drops the elements at the specified positions okay two and four one two three minus one minus two minus three minus four okay now this is a bit confusing who can help here I think what it does, it's actually specifying again the positions, but it says that don't take the element on the first position. Don't take the element on the third position. Oh, so, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, oh. so it's not reading, it's not like it's reading from behind. Oh, Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> in Python, it's what happens, right? When you have yeah. a negative, you choose oh. with, uh, from the rear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> and then some interference from, the, for other, from other yeah. programming languages. Okay, so it's an error to mix positive and negative values. And then, yeah. Then, then the error message mentions subsetting with zero, which returns no value. 
this is not useful very often, but it can be useful if you want to create unusual data structure to test your functional. Subsetting with a logical vector keeps all corresponding to a true value. This is most often useful in conjunction with comparison functions. So we have this 10, 3, NA, 5, 8, 1, NA, all missing values of X. So X is not NA, X. So we have this, so we know what this is saying. It's not um, NA. So we have this. All even or missing values of X, X, yeah, now those that are divisible by two and they're exactly equal to zero, 10, eight. I guess why it's picking NA is because it's, um, yeah, it's going to pick it. Uh, yeah, it's, or missing. Okay, yeah, so it's going to pick it. So, yeah, if you have a named vector, you can subset it with the character vector. Yes, X, A, B, C is one, D, F. So we can subset X, Y, Z, which is five then def which is two okay so like the positive integers you can also use a vector to duplicate individual entries and um, yeah so we can check this yeah it's also important there's an important variation of, to this which is double subset only ever extract a single element and always drops names it's a good idea to use it whenever you want to make it clear that you're extracting a single item as in a for loop as in a for loop, the distinction between this and this is also important for list. And then we'll see that shortly. I won't be able to go over this because we need to finish exactly so that we allow the second um, court to have you know, time to settle in. So let me go to recursive lists. So lists are a setup in, in complexity from uh, a step up rather in complexity from atomic vectors because lists can you know, contain other lists, yes. And um, it makes them suitable for representing hierarchical or tree-like structures. And then we create a list with list function. So list this, um, and then this here one, this here two, and then this here three. Okay, that's if you call out this X now, this is how it's going to come out. A very useful tool for working with list is a um, structure because it focuses on the structure, not the content. So if you say structure of X now, we have um, number one, um, yeah, numeric one, then we have two, we have three. So, and this you now is also saying, okay, would, they would show that that is going to be talked about you no know, subsequently. So X named list A is one, B is two, C is three. So the other structure is three, then A here is one, B here is two, C here is three. So Unlike atomic vectors, lists contain a mix of objects. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, list here, we have this, 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 and then we can ask it to list all this. So we have character, we have integer, we have um, numeric, and then we have logical. So lists can also contain, lists can also contain other lists as we see here. So if you have to list out the structure, so list of two, so list of two here, this is a list of two. No, the entire list is a list of two. And then we have the list of two inside the list of the entire list. So which is one, two, and then the list of the list of two, then we have three, four. So um, then we can visualize lists um, here. So this is um, X1, which is a list of two, but each of them is also a list. Uh, no, each of them is not a list. This is a list of two. This is just a list of two. And then X2 is a list of a list. Okay, is a list of a list of two. And then this is also a list of two. This is also a list of two. So this here. So X3 is a list of um, two. And then inside, no, X is a list of one. X3 is a list of one. But inside it, you have a list of two and a list of one. So that's what is being visualized here. Okay, so um, there are three principles. List, okay, list have rounded corners. No, this is just a visualization anyway. Um, and we can go over that. Now, subsetting lists. So there are three ways through which you can subset the list. We have, a, here we have this expression. The list of A, B is a string, C is a pi, and then D is a list of two. So we use this to extract a sub list. So we have string 
the, sorry, we have the structure A, now one and two. So we are picking A and then B. So a list of two A integer is going to list it, then B is the character, a string. Then um, lists of um, the four, one, two, three, four. So the list of this one, minus one and minus five. So like with vectors, you can subset the logical integer or character vector. And then you know, this is here. And then we can use this shorthand for extracting name, name the elements from a list. So we can do A and then this shorthand A. So it's just going to bring out you know, what is within that, you know, the elements within that list. So the distinction between this, um, the square bracket and the double square bracket is really important for list because um, the double bracket drills down into the list while this one just returns you no know, the entire the entire list and then we can go over some of this now list of condiments they're just making them examples here then we have exercises so then we have attributes any vector can contain arbitrary additional metadata treats attributes you can think of attributes as named list of vectors that can be attached to any object so we can get and set additional attributes with um, attribute function or set them all at once so here we have x in one to 10, attributes x now greeting. Okay, so attribute x you no know, greeting is i. Attributes, you no, know, we still have x here, farewell is by. So if you list the attributes of x, then we have um, greeting, which is i. And then we have um, farewell, which is um, by. So there are three important attributes that are used to implement fundamental parts of R. We have names dimensions which is dim and then we have class now we've seen names above and we won't cover dimensions because we don't use mat matrices in this book so I, it's only um cl class okay so um a detailed discussion of object oriented program is also beyond the scope of this book but here is what the typical generic function looks like as date uh, this is um, um we are coercing you no know, a date into another type so this method is to use method means this is a generic function as you call a specific method a function based on the class of the first argument. So not all functions are methods, but you can list all the methods for a generic, no, you can list all the methods for a generic with method function. So methods as date, so we have as date character, as date default. So all these, they have um, what they do. And, um, and then we have examples. Yeah, we have examples of this and um, yeah, we can go over this just to check how you can force, or I don't want to use force, how you can pass that function to change, you know, some date structures. Now, augmented vectors, atomic vectors and lists are the building blocks for other important vector types, like factors and dates. I call these augmented vectors because they are vectors with additional attributes, including class. And because they have class, they behave differently, you know, as against atomic vectors you know, on which we have seen earlier on. So we look at four augmented vectors we consider their factors, dates, date times, and tables. Now for factors, here we have factor, we have this, we have levels, we have this. So type of X is going to tell us that um, it's an integer because this factor, what this factor does is, um, is to make it, um, is to, is to turn this into um, more or less like an integer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain this uh, um, clearly, but um, you force, um, you give these levels, yeah, you give it levels and then this becomes one, two, three, one, two, three. And then, yeah, so that's basically what it's just making, it's giving it levels. So, so it becomes an integer, then the attribute of X, which is in levels, you have A, B, C, D, and E, F, and the class is a factor because you know, this, this you know, um, forces this, you know, creates a level. And then we can actually use this when, you know, when we are doing some other, when we are doing some analysis, it, becomes, it comes in very handy. So for dates, um, as dates, if you call this as dates, then um, 365, and then um, the type is double, and then the attributes, you no know, class is um, is dates. So date times are numeric vectors with class this. That represent the number of seconds since uh, first January nineteen seventy. Um, if we, uh, those of us that are into, you know, um, 
some of these analyses, we we should have come across some of these things. Um, yeah, we are familiar with lubricate function, and then we have year, month, day, hour, minutes. So this is the structure, and then yeah, it's going to turn it into this. Give it a time zone, UTC, UTC universal time, and then the type is double the attributes class. Then we have this, and then the time zone is um, UTC. So the T zone attribute is optional. It controls how the time is printed, not what absolute time refers to. So um, attribute is US and then the Pacific, this US um, Eastern. So there's also another type of date times called this, and they are built up, they are built on top of named list. So um, if you have as this for um, for dates, then the type is going to be a list, and then the attributes. Is going to come out in this second minute hour, you no, know, and then this is what you're going to have you no know, within um yeah, within the list. So then you have you are going to have the class, which is what you've um, you have you no know, uh, asking it to become, and then the time zone could either be yeah, could, it's going to be uh, US Eastern time or EDT. But these are rare inside the tidyverse. They do not crop up in Bazaar because they are needed to extract specific components of a date, like the year or month. And we can even extract more, seconds, minutes, hour. Uh, and since lubricates provides helpers for you to do this instead, you don't need them. And then it's just easier to do this. And then we are we are good. So tables are augmented lists. They have um, table DF, uh, data frame, and columns. So if you have this table, we are a bit familiar with this. Then the list, we have X, Y. The row names, row dot names, we have um, one, two, three, four, five. And then the class, you know, it's a data frame. So the difference between a table and a list is that all the elements of a data frame must be vectors with the same length, exactly. All functions that work with tables enforce this constraint. So traditional data frame structure, so I know you can also make this, you no. Know, um, data dot frame, which is also going to do the same, the same thing, you know, that we have above. The main difference is the class. The class here is a data frame, and then the class here is a is a table data frame. Okay, so um, so the difference is the class. The class of a table includes a data frame, which means tables inherit regular data frame default uh, behavior by default. And then we have exercises. I know I've um, rushed it a bit but um i we have come to the end of um, vectors and um, if there are questions clarifications additions or subtraction we have some few minutes we can entertain that mr daniel yeah i, I think I'll, I'll actually like to go over this chapter again especially the 20.6 and 20.7 part. I think okay. I got cross prompt in those two areas. So I'd, I'd, I'd actually appreciated this video. So what I was aiming to do was to review this video again to see if there are parts that are okay. Uh, but okay. I'm sure next week when you are taking the classes next week, I'm sure I'll probably have some questions for you. Uh, oh, so you can is that okay, okay? Oh, oh, iteration, right? Yes, iteration. Oh, okay, fantastic. All right. Okay. Right. Cool. Maria, well, nothing else for me. Everything was, was good enough. Uh, all right. Maria, any question? Uh, well, no. I would like again to see those those parts, especially the factors and the augmented vectors, because I, I I'm not sure I grasped everything. I think with tables we have worked before, so it was like more familiar. But oh, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, it okay. was great. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. So I, where I've used as factor before. It's like um, when you bring in a data frame into R, and maybe you have um, a string of, um, let's say, fruits, and then you have um, apple, 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 banana, 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 or something like that. That column called fruits, you can make it factor. So it's now going to make um, apple one level, banana one level, you know, as many uh, fruits right. that you have there. I, I use so, it in my data all the time. Yeah, yeah now, so, now I realize yeah. what it is. Uh, so so that's that's um where i've um, been able to use it so yeah so yeah, that's an example i can give so 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think we are making progress. So next week um, is iteration, and then we'll have model and communicate. Um, do enjoy the rest of your day. And um, over to Mr. Daniel. Thank you.